Hey guys, welcome back to Starcastic Remarks. We are starting a very special series of episodes here called Stars Fan Stories. Um, this is the first episode and hopefully many episodes, but uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the background on this because, you know, Chris and James and I were all kind of talking about, you know, our background in hockey and James really hadn't got into hockey until the past couple of years and he considered himself a super fan this year. And, you know, we talked about how our stories are fantastic and we love talking about, you know, the 99 Cup run. I was the only one alive of the three of us, but... Uh, we, we kind of birthed this idea that, you know, hey, how cool would it be to kind of talk to other Stars fans and, you know, get their stories about where they came from and, you know, why they're into hockey and why the Stars and why they continue to suffer through all the anguish that the Stars put us through. So uh, that's kind of how this uh, birthed. But before I introduce today's guest, we, you'll see him on the right-hand side of your screen if you're watching on YouTube. Uh Please go and use the promo code THPN the next time you go and use DraftKings app. Uh, they're our sponsor for this episode and for our podcast. We really appreciate them allowing us to do all this sort of stuff. So, without further ado, he is very he is very famous across Star's social media. Uh, of course, with uh, his little uh, Mandalorian themed Star's gear back there, he's a huge Star Wars fan, a huge Dallas Star's fan, and uh, it's. Awesome that we get to start this series off with Mr. Matt Day. Hey, Matt, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Doing great. Now, um, of course, um, I'm Matt, uh, but actually my nickname, uh, other than this year of The Mandalorian, is actually Mayday, is what I go by uh, when I started. There used to be a fan group back in 2007 called uh, the Stars... Well, we were sponsored by Havoc Energy Drink. We were the Havoc Fanatics in 2007, and that's the nickname I had uh, with them. And since then, that's when I've been dressing up and so forth. Uh, so so th that's how the dressing up kind of got started. But I've had season tickets since 96, been following the team since 93. So, wow. And... Uh, See, recently, this past year, I attended my 1,000th regular season uh, Stars game. Yeah, and they celebrated that yeah. on the Jumbotron. I remember saying that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. So, how did but, this whole uh, how did this whole May Day thing start? Is it just because oh, your last name fact, and that's where it started? It's technically that's uh, kind of what it was. What what happened is uh, back in the 90s when hockey was just getting started in texas or getting you know the stars were getting uh, started uh i would play roller hockey like four nights a week i played goalie and so it was so hard to find goalies that i was just basically being used by every everybody like four nights a week so <laughs> one time i was one of my teammates i had my name on the back of my helmet my goalie helmet and one of my teammates skated by and misread it. Instead of Matt Day, he read it May Day. And <laughs> That's it cool. kind of just stuck. It just kind of stuck. And it was like uh, pretty much it, it because I was a goalie, it kind of fit. So that's just, you know, I, every time my defense failed me, everybody, their, their defensive warning was May Day, May Day, May Day. <laughs> oh, so, that's hilarious. So that's how that's how that nickname started. Back in 2007, uh, Jeff Cave uh, was get, gathering a bunch of fans together to create a fan group, and he had seen me for years walking around the arena and during the playoffs. I'd paint my face, and so he recruited me there. And so that's that's where I began dressing up, and then they kind of got disbanded because we lost our sponsorship and uh, once we lost our sponsorship then the group kind of faded away but I just kept doing it so. oh that's pretty cool man that's yeah. so I, I, I gotta I gotta ask you though because obviously 
if if you're watching on YouTube, you can kind of look in the background of uh, yeah. Matt's camera. He's got it looks like you got the Loki horns over there. You've got oh, that's all my, sorts of. That's my current project. Yeah. That, oh, that's your that current Loki, project. Uh, it's I'm doing this not for the stars, but for Fan Expo coming up in a couple weeks. Oh, that's I'm awesome. doing a I'm doing a Mandalorian Loki variant. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, so that that's my current project. But so well, so I got to ask you. So, uh, what was what, what came first? Your your Star Wars fandom, or was it your Dallas Stars fandom? And then how did they start to well, coincide together? Okay, well, my hockey fandom started in eight nineteen eighty. And the star, uh, the Star Wars started in 1977 when I was like an infant, basically. It's the first, uh, the first movie I ever saw at the theater or remember seeing at the theater. Which, of course, I was a toddler, so I barely remember any of it. I mainly remember the feelings I got from watching it. But uh, my dad took me to go see. Uh, before it was a New Hope, it was just Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's what got me on Star Wars. Uh, but this, hockey, though, it, it goes back to uh, when I was in kindergarten. I grew up in Dallas. Uh, I grew up in Garland. I, I was born in Dallas. But my first homework assignment ever uh, was in kindergarten when my teacher sent me a note home saying, asking my parents if I could stay up and watch a hockey game. It was during the Olympics. So the first hockey game I ever watched was the Miracle on Ice game. Oh, you're kidding. That is awesome. No, it was, And so I was like a six-year-old kid just sitting there watching just, you know, my parents let me stay up as long as I didn't make, up, make too much noise. And I kept like semi-whispering, USA, USA, <laughs> you know, around along with the crowd. And so I just got into it and that's, that's how I got hooked on hockey. But unfortunately, my kindergarten teacher had explained to me that you live in Texas, and so you're going to have to wait another four years to see more hockey. <laughs> exactly. So. She's kind of right. <laughs> She's kind of right about yeah. that. Especially back then, there was no internet. There was no nothing. It was just what you could read in the paper and and all that. So I was basically in a drought from hockey until – my I was in high school, my senior year, in 1992. I was uh, in an electronics class, and uh, I repaired this old TV just so that we could watch the Olympics in '92 on on the TV in, in the classroom. And it was then they announced that the stars were coming to Dallas, right about the the, the time of the Olympics. So that's when I was. Right then, I was on board with the, the stars from that moment. I was like, we're getting a team. All right, here we go. So well, what was that feeling like when they when they first announced that? Because uh, I was born in 93, so that's why I kind yeah. of – I love the Dallas Stars because they came into existence the same year that I was born. So c- can you well, d- describe that feeling of how it was like hearing that the stars were coming to Dallas, hockey was coming to Dallas? Well, it was – it was – exciting but then i'm like okay a team is moving what kind of team are we getting you know mm-hmm. it's like let me so let me look it up and it, it's not was it's not as easy to look things up back in 92 as it is now so i had to sit there and pull out the uh the dallas morning news or the dallas times herald as they had back then uh, look back and see what i was getting and i was excited because i they had just been in the stanley cup final like a year before like i think 91 yeah. i think right yeah yeah yeah. So, somewhere on there i'm like yeah okay cool and then they were in the top of their division but as soon as the announcement was made they kind of just like teetered out and you know kind of it's almost like they were like oh crap we're moving to dallas you know <laughs> like what what are we going to expect we're going you know we're going to doubt da- Who's how could hockey survive in Texas? Come on, yeah, with the so Cowboys they, right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and pretty much, it, without the Cowboys, we wouldn't have the stars. So anybody who attacks 
the Cowboys, it was Roger Staubach was one of the biggest promoters for the stars coming to, to Dallas. So, I mean, you have to give them our bigger, our bigger brothers some kind of thumbs up, even, even though people like to attack them. But, well, let me ask you this, because I'm in, I'm interested to know since you were, I assume you were there for at least a couple of games that inaugural season, correct? I no, I was, I was oh, really? just out okay. of high school. I was just out of high school. Oh, so no money. First season, <laughs> I had no money. I was, I was paying my way through a community college, or you know, going through East, going to Eastfield, and so I had no job, no money, and so I was watching on TV. I didn't even have cable. As either TV or uh, radio is my only two uh, means to keep up with the stars. But I kept up every game. Wow. So, it, it, did you have like a favorite player from that first season? I, I I think a lot of people would say the obvious and say Mike Madonna or Neil Broughton or somebody like that. But well, it was Neil Broughton because he was on the team. On the Team USA, the first game, Miracle on Ice, I, yeah, the Miracle on Ice. He was, he was the player that I was familiar with because of the Miracle on Ice game, and so I immediately tilted toward him and Madonna. Uh, I love Tenorti, and I actually uh, Darcy Walkalot. I loved uh, him because I started playing goalie, and so I was into him more than uh. More than Andy Moog, really, but but that, that was that was my guy back then. Well, I, I loved Andy Moog too. I was just a goalie guy. This is a goalie guy, so. <laughs> um, but, so, but that that. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say uh, that kind of reminds me of uh, my mom. The first time I got a got an autograph from a star, uh, it was right. I mean, like the almost the day after they were eliminated from the playoffs against Vancouver. Um, we went to what was called uh, Incredible Universe, which eventually became Fry's. We're standing in line to get autographs, and my mom was with me, and she looks up and sees Shane Churla. Oh, oh that's cool. Yes. Yeah, he, well, she she sees him, and she goes, oh, I thought these guys were tough. They look like little wimps. Churla? <laughs> no, but, but he said, said they're, like, they're just like regular guys. They're like little wimps. And Shane Turtle actually heard him, uh, heard her say that, and he looks at me, and I'm like, "What are you looking at me for?" She goes, "I can't hit a woman." <laughs> <laughs> Man, and and for those of you that don't know who that is, he he is, I mean, he was a really tough guy back in the '90s. So, I mean, yeah, really yeah, well, tough guy. He was the guy. Okay, when when people would come visit uh, to see the stars from other venues uh team you know people who were real hockey fans because they they were born in a a different area mm -hmm. they were more of a hockey area the first thing they would ask you is who who is the better player madonna or churla to see if you knew what you were talking about because all the promos were shane churla because they were trying to promote the you know the roughness and fighting in hockey and right he was like he was the guy that the stars were promoting whereas Madonna was the one scoring all the goals. So that's that's how we used to be tested. Is like, also, who's better? Who would you rather have, Sherla or, or Madonna on your team? Wow. I'm like, and you're like, are you serious? <laughs> Does anybody ever say Sherla? Because yeah. whatever. But anyway, that was just a side note. Oh, that's that's a no. That's a, that's exactly what we're trying to get out with with stuff like that. That's an awesome story to hear because, uh, I actually completely forgotten about Sherla. Uh, it it's been so long since I've looked into the history of the stars. I completely forgot that he was a he was a star for a while. But, yeah. um, okay. So when so that first season, you you just kind of watch just on TV and stuff like that. When did you yeah. actually start going to games? Do you do you know when you started go going to games? I my first game was in 1995 when I I just finished my uh, two years, uh, got my associates in electronic theory. And so I got a job and got some money. And my cousin and I went to a game. Uh, I remember it was Tampa Bay 
and it ended in a tie, and I thought that was the weirdest feeling ever, leaving a sporting event, and nobody won, nobody lost. It was just, like, just weird. Mm -hmm. But then we went to a game. Uh, San Jose Sharks was right after that, and I was like, man, I got to keep going to these. But it wasn't until I we got a mini package uh, the next year, but it wasn't until we were sitting at home listening to the Stars overcome a three-goal deficit in the last minute of a game, like met, last two minutes of uh, a game against Boston, that we realized, man, we can't be missing this. If we were listening to it on the radio because we didn't have cable, and we're sitting there to listen to it on the radio, and we keep thinking it's a replay of another. Uh, why do they keep replaying that goal? And then I realized it was another goal. And it, was, <laughs> it was like crazy. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, we we overcame a three-goal deficit in the last couple of minutes to win the game. I was like, we got to start. We got to be there every game. And so we kind of converted our uh, our mini package into a full season, and we just had full season pretty much since then and you never looked back never looked back that's that's awesome uh all right so did you uh, let, let's let's fast forward to 1999 did you did you ever get to go to any of the uh, stanley cup playoff games in 1999 at all all of them all of them oh, i, I, I you know, so i'm so jealous <laughs> i haven't i haven't missed uh, a playoff game the only time I missed the playoff game since 96 was because of work. And it was uh, game, see, game five against the Red Wings in the cup final. Not the, the Western Conference final. And I was stuck in a high rise in New Jersey working on an air conditioner at one in the morning. And I, I kept thinking, man, well, we were at a bar before we went to, to the job site. Uh -huh. And it was two two one, and it didn't look like the stars were going to do anything. We were losing, and then um, I find out at three in the morning, you know, still working, that uh, they turned it onto a sports station, and it was they they talked about it, and I was started yelling and screaming. I was like, no, I can't. I'm not missing any more uh, playoff games. And so uh, the next year on that job, I used every single one of my vacation days the day of a playoff home game so that they couldn't send me out of town. That's some dedication and right there, man. I, <laughs> That's I awesome. Ran, I ran out of vacation days. This is a sad story. Right after we won the cup. And so I was out of vacation days and missed the parade. Oh, man, that stinks. Yeah. So the next year, I started saving my money up. I was like, this is not going to happen again. And I quit my job uh, the week before they started the 2000 playoff run. And my I goodness. Didn't even look. <laughs> I, started, I started the job I have now like two days after uh, we were eliminated by the Devils in the final. Oh, man. So uh, I guess let me ask you this because I'm guessing it – that this is probably it, but do you have like a favorite Dallas Stars moment that you remember? Was it the '99 Cup run? Was it you know for for a lot of the younger generation of Stars fans like my two brothers, it was the 2020 bubble playoffs. But do you have like what? a specific memory? There's, there's a and, and it could be more I than mean, one. I, yeah, I, go ahead, go go for I it. I don't know where to go. I mean, you could you can have you can have to start doing like. You know those extra letters they give you in Wheel of Fortune, which okay, everybody's gonna pick <laughs> this one. So, so you can go ahead and put the cup, winning the cup here and there. Of course, those are the the top ones. But actually, being at a game, it was actually in the game we lost in the Cup final when we were eliminated. It was watching a uh, Daryl Sador block a shot and uh, basically shatter his knee. And then hobble and to instead the bench. Of, yeah. And hobble. What he was hobbling. No, he was hobbling in front of the net. He was actually hobbling to get in front of the net to help block shots. And it what was a warrior. Like, and I was like, that is amazing. the The other memory was maybe uh, the year before. 
when um, we were sitting there, it, it didn't sink in that we were in the cup final until game one. I'm sitting, I'm sitting in my seat, and I didn't recognize it until I looked up and saw the out of town of scoreboard, out of town scoreboard, and it said none. And then it sunk in. Wait, this is it. it. There ain't there ain't nobody else. It. Yeah, it's it's us. It's us and them, and then that's it. And then that, that was like the. It just gave me chills. So, it it was amazing the whole the whole run. What what did you think about? Uh, I think one of my favorite stars moments was actually we didn't even make it to the Stanley Cup final. It was in two thousand eight. And I'll remember this for the rest of my life. But it was two particular moments, and, and they both involved Brendan Morrow. But uh, the first one was that hit on Milan Mahalik. I mean, just I mean, at the end of the third period, going into overtime, it set the tone for overtime. And then, uh, then obviously his game-winning goal in like I think it was triple or quadruple overtime. I don't have it here in front of me, but I, I just remember that that. Those moments were some of my favorite moments because that's when I was really, really growing up and growing with the stars and stuff like that. Do you remember that at all? Yeah, yeah. Where, did I you do. happen to be at those games? Yeah. I they they all become a blur. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after a thousand <laughs> like, games, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, I remember. I remember those moments vaguely. I also remember. One of another moment was when one of my teammates was with me. He was like eighteen, and he was when well, I he he was like seventeen, and his mom and dad let him have you know go with me to games, and um, we were watching Stars and Blackhawks, and uh, Mike McDonald scored a hat trick, and we had this Blackhawks fan sitting right behind us, and. Uh, we jumped up when he scored the hat trick and my friend accidentally knocked the guy's beer out of his hand. And so he was like, my friend was covered in beer. And then <laughs> my friend turns around, Hey, let me buy you a beer. And he goes, no, I shouldn't have been leaning over you. And he goes, I'm not buying the beer cause I spilled it. I'm, I'm buying the beer cause your team sucks. And I feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, Whoa, you're going to get me in a fight now. And then I had to take him home smelling like beer to his parents. And oh, I'm sure that was fun to explain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I swear we weren't doing anything. I swear, I swear. That, that beer is too expensive to give it to your kid. Right. No joke. But well, that that's awesome. Uh, hearing some of those stories and everything like that. Uh, thanks. Thank yeah, you for but, sharing with that. But uh, what else? What, what other moments do you can you think of? What? The, the majority of them? Honestly, they it's not really about what goes on the on the ice. It's about the friends you make, the the fans themselves make the moments. Uh, and it's experiences. A lot of them are like personal experiences. Like, uh, well, one of them was when I was dressing up a few years ago. Uh, I kept getting um, messages. I got a message from the ice girls director and she asked me to make sure that I was dressing up for the Halloween game. I'm like, no, I usually take that one off. Usually that's the one I don't dress up for because everybody else is. And I was joking around. She goes, no, you got to be there dressed up. And I was like, okay, whatever. I get there. And one of the ice girls decided to dress as me for a <laughs> Halloween game. And that was kind of awesome. Oh, that's awesome. And another one, I don't know if I want to, uh, back in 2010, uh, I was diagnosed with uh, stage three colon cancer. Now, this is a good, this is a happy story, so don't get all bogged down. Everything's good now. Um, but the Stars Fanatics went and got uh, the team to sign to autograph an inflatable butt cushion for me <laughs> for the surgery. So that was, that was an amazing moment. And then, uh, what was it? Uh, there was, Oh yeah. I didn't even bring up. I can't believe we got this far and I haven't even mentioned the monkey. 
see y'all y'all know me as mandalorian there's like there is a whole generation of people of kids or now adults who knew, knew me as the monkey man the monkey man and the monkey man because i popped off that whole same year that i was going through all the chemo and all that i popped off at a watch party on and they had the camera crew there and everything uh this was back when well, this is a year before all that. It's Brad Richards was on the team back then. Stars are the hottest team in the league. Um, they were first place in the Pacific, and I popped off and said, "I'm gonna, I'll wear this." I had this little toy stuffed monkey. I said, "I'll wear this on my back every single Stars event until the Stars make the playoffs." That's how confident I am because we're arguing back and forth whether the Stars are gonna break their drought, their playoff drought back then. Right. And uh. I was like, I'm so confident that they will. That I'll wear this stuff monkey on, on my back until they win the or until they make the playoffs. Well, they were well, they had it well in hand, and so I thought I was going to wear him for five games, and that was going to be it. Well, Brad Richards broke his wrist, and Stars lost like ten. Out of, 10 out of the last 11 games or something like that. I and remember missed that. Playoffs, missed the playoffs by one point. And the first phone call I get is from my ticket rep going, um, sorry about the monkey. And <laughs> so, yeah, I, I had I had to wear a stuffed monkey on my back for four years. Oh, my. Every single Stars event for four years, I wore that stuffed monkey on my back. That is and some serious it, dedication. Yeah, well, I... The thing is, they they made me repeat it on TV, so everybody heard. It's not like I could have just like I could have said it to a couple people and then it just gone away, but everybody heard it on TV, and so all all the ticket all the season ticket holders around me knew and everything. They were gonna hold me to it, mm-hmm. and so for for four years I had the thing on my back, and they they actually showed me when. When we finally broke the streak in 2013-2014, uh, they had me up on the jumbotron taking my the monkey off my back and all that. <laughs> it was it was, was kind of crazy. the The other I don't know the other part of that is a funny story with uh, they used to have a bit on Fox Sports uh, called Mingling with Marty. And uh, he would go. This is after he retired. He'd go around and. You know, talk to fans, you know, before the games and all that. And he chased me around the whole segment trying to uh, get me to ask me, what happens if your monkey misbehaves? What do you do? You know, trying to lure me into saying that I was spanking <laughs> on TV. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's like I, too many people watching. They, they, no, I can't. I can't say that on TV. Right. But that's pretty cool. Well, let, let me ask you, uh, I, got, I got two questions for you, actually, that are popping in my head. So the first one is, okay, so you celebrated your thousandth Dallas Stars game uh, this yes. season. So yes. how did you, did you actually have to, like, go back and figure that out? Or how, how did you, how did you have to figure that out? Here, Here's the deal. The first couple of years before I had, you know, official real season tickets. I used to buy a putt for every game that I went to. Well, that got to be take up way too much space and it, whatever. But after that, and I had season tickets, I didn't miss hardly any games. So mm-hmm. mainly it was a process of elimination. I went on online and uh on stat tracker one of these stat tracker places yahoo sports or whatever and got all the schedules and i just eliminated the games that i knew i missed which because i only missed maybe two or three at the most a year i mean the most i've missed in a season uh was five and that was when i had my cancer surgery and in chemotherapy Mm -hmm. and that that was only because when i was diagnosed the doctor actually scheduled me to have surgery to have it removed on during the home opener and i told him no i said no you're gonna reschedule that because i'm not missing the home opener because that was 
the one where Madonna returned as a Red Wing. And I'm like, so no. you so you rescheduled your your operation yeah. to be at the Stars had, opener. Yeah, I had a puck sized tumor in in my colon that had to be removed. And I was oh like, my goodness. Uh, wow. I made a I made a move it to the next week, but after I had the surgery, there was like a four, uh, there was a five game homestand or whatever. And so I missed those games because of the surgery, but that's the only thing I missed that whole season. So I, I'm able to basically process the elimination, figure out how many games I've been to. And you just went all the way back to uh, 95, 96, your first season, you yes. started going to games and you're just yeah. like, okay, I, I missed that one. I missed that one. Missed that one. Okay. Next season. I missed these two. And yeah. you just did how long did that take yeah. you to do? Like, uh, I did it during that break. Uh, I pretty much did most of it during the break when we had, uh, you know, the pandemic break. Well, before mm-hmm. the bubble, I did it, you know, because I was bored and there was no hockey games and nothing really going on. So I'm like, let me figure. It, let's see if I can figure this out. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did. Uh, that's what I mean. That's what we did when we got bored during the pandemic, and uh, we decided to start this podcast. And <laughs> then they announced yeah. the return to play. So, yeah. Well, normally I pass the time during the summer making costumes for the next season, but all that was up in the air. So I'm like, eh, I'm gonna stick with this and go with it. And uh, so, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was I was gonna transition to that is. And uh, this is the first year I just went with uh, Star Wars Mandalorian theme. That was going to uh, be my next I've question, done, yeah. Yeah, I, I've done various themes before. It A lot of times it has no meaning at all because I had one, just a suit of armor that lit up. You can see it across the arena. Mm-hmm. I did I did uh, a version where I was uh, like Green Arrow back when that TV series was popular. CW, yeah. Yeah, and then I did 2019, uh, 2020. I started off as a Doctor Strange, but then they announced the Winter Classic, and they were pumping it up with uh, all the country western type stuff. So it kind of evolved into a country country western version of <laughs> Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. But but then. The next year after that, I did Star Lord and uh, uh, Winter Soldier. Oh, that's cool. Both of those, and then this year Mandalorian, and I tried something different uh, with the Mandalorian. Is I three D printed three because what happens in the process of a year, fifty or so games, that costume just gets worn out, and it's just like you can't wear it two seasons in a row. Mm-hmm. But so this year I tried with three different versions so that it would last longer so that perhaps this summer I could work on stuff around the house instead of working on costumes all the time. <laughs> Cause I got it. I got some projects around the house that got to get done. And so I'm like, no, I, let me try the Mandalorian one more season and see where it goes. So, so that the helmet that you have directly behind you the the green one it is is yes. so that's one of three then that you have okay so you got all three here i i did the dark green one without the horns this year as okay well. that's right i remember i remember you wearing that one i saw it on broadcast and then there is uh the star wars black series uh i'm pointing at my screen like you can see what i'm pointing at <laughs> uh, the mandalorian uh the silver one is the only one that i bought and that one was a black series that I already had, and then I 3D printed the armor to go with it. And then uh, I got some glow in the dark, uh, glow in the dark 3D filament for the one for the blackout. Oh, that's so cool, man! So I, I guess I got to ask you this uh, this next question. I don't even know if you've even thought about it, but do you have a plan for next season as to what you might do for next no. season? No, no, that's. That's what I was saying is this this year I made three so that they would last two years. Oh, okay, okay. So the, Sorry, I mis- so misunderstood I'm going, that. You know, I'm going I'm going Mandalorian next year as well. I may the the arm pieces and um, I may change those up a little bit just so it's not 
you know, completely the same. Mm-hmm. So I may, I may uh, do a little bit of work there, but for the most part, I'm trying to uh, keep my schedule busy to do some housework instead of making uh, new costumes. So, I mean, The Mandalorian was probably my most popular so far. So I, I guess I'll make it last another year and see if people let me do anything else. Well, uh, that's just fantastic, man. I mean, do what you want. I mean, seriously, because all, all the stuff that you've done uh, that, that you're talking about, they, they've all been fantastic. I've loved all of them. So, Well, look, the problem is people ask me to wear some of the older ones. So I'm like, every year my skill set gets a little bit better. And I'm like, I look at the old costumes, I'm like, Ooh, I'm not going in public in that. I was like, <laughs> I can do so much better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I was like, yeah, I, 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 no, I'm not doing that one now. No, no. So hopefully the Mandalorian armor is probably the best I, quality that I've done that I'd actually let go in a second season. All right. So I got to ask you the most important question of all here. Okay. Because it, it is very controversial. Which of the Star Wars are the worst ones? Do you like the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, or the, uh, I guess, the sequel trilogy, 7, 8, 9? Well, <laughs> so which are the worst? Yes. The last, th- the last three, because it didn't really have flow to it, it's, they, it's almost like they just threw it together. To um, make money. Yeah. yeah it's just a Disney and, thing. Well, I mean, I don't mind them, but the more I look at it, the more I... I mean, the first three episodes of Obi-Wan were better than the last three. Oh, uh, see, I haven't I haven't seen that yet. I still need to go oh, and not, see it. Uh, don't, don't worry, I won't, I won't spoil it. But to me, it, it was like they kept changing directors and writers, and it didn't really have a flow. It probably had a basic storyline, and it just... I mean, there was stuff that was supposed to happen, I guess, with Finn that never happened. There, There's a whole storyline with him that, that you know, possibly that he was Force-sensitive and those other troopers that escaped were also supposed to be Force-sensitive. That's how they were able to escape the, the mind control of, uh, you know, the First Order. Right. But, I mean, there's a lot to it that, but... Yeah, it's and I I really hate the fact that they keep bringing people back from the dead. Let, yeah, let Palpatine just let that. him die. Yeah. Seriously. Well, the, well, the problem was the problem with that is when I was a kid, that's how the story ended for years, for decades. That's how it ended. He was gone, and then to bring him back is kind of like you just undid my childhood. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. So I, I totally get that because I've asked every I, I'm not I wouldn't consider myself like a huge Star Wars fan, but I do enjoy all the movies, all the shows. I've read a couple of, of their books and stuff like that. But when when they did that, I was just kind of like, what, what's the point? I mean, you could have a yeah. new bad guy. You could have any yeah. new bad guy it's, and it would be, would exactly. have been better. Well, and honestly, when you look at it, that is why. Obi Wan, not Obi Wan, The Mandalorian was so much better than the so Book good. of Boba Fett, and the reason it it got less, so much less criticism than the Book of Boba Fett is people have had forty years. I mean, Boba Fett had three lines in all of the original trilogy, right? Just three lines, but from those three lines, people have had forty years to establish their own story on whether or not or what kind of person he was, you know, what, you know, who he was, how he was supposed to react to all this various uh, stuff. Whereas the Mandalorian was a fresh new character. He could go anywhere. He could be, you know, evil. He could be good. He could, you know, he could, he had a whole spectrum, you know, of, of you know, different directions he could have gone in. Whereas everybody was set on how Boba Fett should have been, and mm-hmm. the same thing is true with all, with the rest of the characters in the in the whole uh, Star Wars universe. Is everybody is set in their ways on how people are supposed to be, 
and it, it's like that's why they just need to start fresh just brand new characters in the same universe no ties to the skywalker legacy just just go out there and what what i'd really like to see is them come up with more of a everything is either sith or, or jedi and there's so much in the middle where they need to find some gray jedi or someone Someone like is like a Punisher type for Marvel, where yeah, like an anti-hero. He, the anti-hero, where he's basically he's ultimately going to do the right thing, but he's not necessarily going to do it, you know, the way the Jedi would approve. So he might force choke somebody. He might, you know, right, you know, shoot some lightning at him. But he's he's not going to leave. He's not going to leave the bad guy there to. Uh, to repent from his sins and turn good. He's just going to like, you're not coming back and killing me later. I'm, I'm going to just end you right here. Right. So it kind of like some of the, some of the darker Batmans kind of, for example. So not, not the Christian Bale Batman who was all holy and righteous and stuff like that. But some of the darker Batmans who would like, you know, he would kill people to, to get information that he needed. And yeah. Uh Oh, but, um, yeah, let me uh, let me ask you about this because I'm interested to to know your opinion on this. Back to hockey now, but okay. Um, do you have? How are you feeling about next season? Because I mean, it, this team is in kind of a weird flex right now. We've got some some veterans who are pretty good. Who you know they're being paid a lot of money. They haven't scored a ton. Uh, like we hope they would with Ben and Sagan. But then we've also got all these young guys that are coming up with Haskinen and Robertson, Hints, and then, you know, those some of those younger guys down in uh, the Canadian Junior Leagues uh, that may have a shot of making the Stars roster. Um, how are you feeling about next season? Do you think this team can make the playoffs? Are they, uh, are they like yeah. a... Go ahead, go ahead. I think... There, there's potential for this team to, to do, you know, some great things. And I think the problem with what happened this past season is they, the team under a bonus this last year was afraid to lose. So they were playing not to lose. So they suffocated this, these great offensive players. I'm not sure how much Ben and Sagan were just that bad or – they were so tied to the system that they weren't able to thrive. And you see that because when you see a young player come up like Robert Robertson and he just dominates until he learns that he has to fit in the system. And once he starts fitting in the system, everything, everybody starts pulling back. And uh, I think if they get a more of an offensive minded coach, not completely offensive, somewhere in the balance, somewhere between Lindy Ruff and Ken Hitchcock, somewhere in between, where they're not afraid to take chances, then I think they'll be fine. I just think they got to where they were they were afraid to uh, take chances and score because they didn't want to, you know, biting them. But I think they'll, there's, there's a good chance they'll do well. I don't know. Here's the the problem is, is Jim Neal has done a great job of building a team. You can see that with his picks. You can see the talent on the roster. He's just really been bad about picking a coach that can put it all together. This is like his and, fifth and, coach and in did, nine years. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I don't know. If, I don't know if I want to uh, call anybody out. You don't have to. You don't have to. This is totally. So this is totally I, about you, man. There, the only when you look when you look at it in an engineering standpoint, when you look for troubleshooting something, you look to see what has changed from this time to the last time, and basically the only thing that's been the same, it's been the same results since 2013 to now. The only thing that hasn't changed is the leadership or the core in the room. You still got Ben, you still got Sagan, you know, that everybody follows them. They follow their lead. 
the stars were great when Ben stood up and had played well. When he when he carried them on their back, when he but when he uh, played tough or you know whatever, the team followed that. But when he took a game off, everybody kind of seemed like they took a game off. And you know I'm not really calling him out because you can't really with his health and his age. I'm not sure he can do that every night, but you know, you got to get to a point where you either have to move past that uh, or you have to uh, find a way to work around it. And they haven't quite done that. And, and, and Sagan's kind of done that a little bit. He was, he was okay yeah. this year. He's better than last year yeah. and he's coming off a really, yeah. a really bad injury yeah. and stuff. Well, yeah, that's, well, that's the point. I'm not, I'm not calling them out as yeah. a, you know, they're not, I'm not saying they're not trying. Yeah. I'm just saying they they may not um, do as much as they can because they're fighting through a lot of stuff. Maybe they should have just, you know, taken some games off and relaxed and gotten over it. Because yeah. Jamie Ben doesn't take a game off when possibly he probably needs to uh, take some, some uh, what is it, uh, what is it, what do they call it in basketball when they they rest their stars or whatever? Uh, whatever they they'll uh, take a game off here and there. Yeah, I know what you're I, talking about. I'm trying to think of the word, I'm trying to take the, but think of the word for it. But occasionally they need maybe a day off and or a, a game or two off, maybe a whatever. They they should have enough depth to be able to put up with that during the regular season. But the most important thing for the stars this next year is to get a good start because the worst thing about this team is they're a reactive team, not a proactive team. Whereas they only play well when their backs are against the wall. And so they just need to get a good start. So they're not chasing the whole season. Sorry. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I, I, the last I okay. heard was had a good start. I probably, I, I probably just solved all the stars problems, but I can't remember what I just said, but <laughs> <laughs> but what what I'm saying is they need to get off to a good start because this team um, historically is a reactive team, not a proactive team where they don't play well until their backs are against the wall until they feel the pressure and then they go at it, which is great for the playoffs, but really bad for the regular season because there's so many games then you Next thing you know, you're finally you're chasing the whole second half of the season, trying to get into the playoffs. And by the time you get to the playoffs, you just have nothing left. And they've got to get a better start in the season. They, you can't win a playoff spot early in the season, but you sure can lose it. Yep, I agreed. That's a that, that's a very good quote. I forgot who. I've heard that somewhere uh, else actually, before too. Yeah, I think it was referring to um, baseball, but it, it applies here too. Well, Matt, I, I think we're gonna we're gonna cut it off here, man. Uh, thanks for agreeing to do this. Uh, this was a lot of fun just for me to hear some uh, some of those stories. You've got some fantastic stories. I'm sure you even ha- haven't even scratched the surface on some of the other ones. Uh, no, no, I just hit the highlights. I, I did like George Lucas. I, I started in the middle. I just took the three best stories <laughs> and and did those, and then I, I I'll give you the rest of the crap later if you want. Well, what, what, we might have to do a part two on this just to just to hear some more stories. That's that's awesome, man. So, but uh, I think we're gonna cut it off here uh, for today. But um, can you tell everybody where they can find you, like on social media, if uh, they don't know who you are? Oh shoot! Hold on, let me look that up because I don't remember <laughs> my own. I don't even remind, know my own tagline on social media, and that is ridiculous. I know, but. Uh, I think I just kind of th- I just kind of threw you to the wolves I, there. I didn't I didn't prepare yeah, you for no, it. Yeah, no, well, no, that, that's quite <laughs> all right. It's like, yeah, it's uh, it's Matthew underscore n underscore day uh, on Twitter. So if you want to go and follow him, he's got all sorts of of fun stuff going on there. A lot of uh, Star Wars stuff that I, I noticed when I was I kind of stole your picture for the uh, the little yeah. thumbnail from yesterday. So yeah, but. but- going through your twitter there's a lot of fun stuff there well 
uh, you know, thanks again, Matt, for doing this. And uh, again, we may have to do a part two on this because it sounds like you've got more to tell us. So, um, yeah, so thanks for doing this. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Yep. And uh, for those of you listening, we thank you for uh, joining us and uh, listening along for this first episode of Stars Fan Stories. Uh, we'll be doing these probably about one or two every single week with various Stars fans, uh, various ages, you know, females, males, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think I've got about five or six lined up already, so it's just insane the amount we've already got uh, ready to go. But uh, we'd really appreciate it if you guys would leave a review, comment, like, whatever you can do. Uh, we'd appreciate that. That helps us out as much as possible. And once again, thanks to uh, DraftKings for sponsoring uh, our podcast and uh, this episode as well. So, And along with uh, Matt, my name's Ryan. This has been Starcastic Remarks, Stars Fans uh, Stories, Episode 1. We'll catch you guys on the flip side.